Now we wanted to take today and, and make a video and kind of do a little bit of talk on, on what we think a few homesteading essentials are. So we were not going to make a video today. We were actually going to go work the land <laughs> and move around uh, some firewood and move a couple rocks and rake up a bunch of leaves and stuff and just get rid of a bunch of stuff like that. But we were not able to do that because our trailer was not ready to go. Now the trailer is definitely one of the homesteading essentials, but it was not ready to go because the gate is not on it. So whenever we put all the leaves and everything in the firewood in here, as we go to move, it's all going to fall out the back. Now the gate's not on it because we cut the gate off of it. <laughs> and we cut the gate off of it because it's only a seven foot trailer. And whenever we move logs around to the sawmill or boards up to here, the logs that we move are nine feet and you can't put a nine foot log in a seven foot trailer. So we needed the gate off of it. So we cut the gate off of it. It was a silly design from the beginning. It's a tractor supply trailer. Now we bought it on the side of the road somewhere. We didn't buy it new. There's no way we could have afforded that. But anyways, long story short, the whole point of this, uh, what seems to be meaningless rambling is, is about to have a point. <laughs> and the point is we had to cut the gate off of here so we could actually turn it into a usable thing, but it needs a gate sometimes. And the reason why we had to cut the gate off is because it was made wrong. You're supposed to be able to like let it down and slide the gate to the side and remove the gate, but this one was not like that. And they did it that way because it just made it easier to make these pins, latches, complicated story. But so we had to cut the gate off and now we're going to weld it back on, which brings us to another homesteading essential, absolute essential, is a welder. You have to have a welder on a homestead. It just brings so much value and it enables you to do so many things that, that otherwise would be impossible. And for me to express that to you now, you're thinking, well, I don't really need a welder. And you're right, because all you're planning in your reality now without a welder, you don't need a welder because you're not making plans based on this empowering element of having a welder. Now, if you had a welder, all of your plans would change because you had the ability to weld and that would just unlock this, this ability to do so much more and, and, and to uh, just be so much more capable. Anyways, so I'll stop rambling and I'm gonna get to work. I gotta fix this thing, weld the gate back on here, do some engineering here to make it latch and everything work right how it's supposed to be. And then uh, we will talk about a few other of what we think are homesteading essentials. So yeah, let's get busy. Now, we have it proper hinging, working all good, and, and uh, we also have it so we can let it down and then slide it to the side and it will come off. Now, okay, the way it was before is they had both of their hinges opposing one another, and what that did was that centered the gate and it maintained the center but it also maintained that you couldn't get the gate off, which in turn maintained that the entire piece of equipment was semi-dysfunctional. <laughs> and we would be forever uh, uh, restricted to using a dysfunctional piece of equipment if we didn't have the ability to remedy that. Now with our welder and uh, this, the tiniest little bit of engineering skills, we can quickly overcome that and turn an otherwise dysfunctional piece of equipment into a very usable thing just like that without a lot of effort. Now, so we flipped one of the hinges around and so now we have the option of letting the gate down and sliding it to the side. And it will come off when we need it off and it'll go back when we need it on. However, we also created a problem. Now, uh, the problem is that the gate won't stay centered. So that's gonna take a little bit more engineering uh, thought, whatever, to, to uh, do something to ensure that the gate stays center. So let me do some brainstorming 
and we'll see what we come up with. So here's an up close look at some of our welds just to show you that they don't really look too bad. Now this is, this is the solution to our centering problem here. So what we've done is we've taken a piece of three quarter by three quarter square tubing that we had a little scrap piece laying over here in our scrap pile and we welded it around there and now our latch pin freely moves in and out. So when we close the gate, it will center between these two points and it can't rattle off center. And it'll always maintain the proper positioning to, uh, to be latched securely. Now, okay, so that centering problem was easy to solve, but accidentally in doing that, we sa solved another problem, <laughs> which was a significant problem. Now, before these pins would stick out unprotected, and when we would roll big logs, bang, down into the trailer, it would break the latch pins off. And I already had to make uh, both of these new already and from scrap we had laying around. But now with this, uh, this guard, this protector around it that serves as a centering uh, uh, device, but also a, a, a shield, now we don't have to worry about that getting broke off. So I think that was a fairly decent solution. And now our gate is working. Let's, well, let's see if it works. <laughs> Bang. There it is. Good as new and, and uh, ready, ready to go to work. Touch it up with a little paint so it doesn't rust. So now that we have the gate squared away, we have another, another pressing issue. We have to stabilize the tongue of this trailer. Now, the, the trailer tongue is bent partially due to like poor engineering, but we're definitely not gonna blame it on that. We will, we will uh, take full responsibility for bending the trailer tongue <laughs> because it actually got bent by us overloading the trailer by like twice its max rated load, probably a thousand times. <laughs> and so, so uh, that's how the trailer tongue got damaged. It was, I, I would say partially poor engineering, but, but at the same time, uh, just using the trailer for more than it's what it's rated, rated for is, is what is responsible for that. So we will, we will take responsibility for that. But anyways, so we are gonna flip the trailer up and, uh, and go ahead and fix the tongue.
All right, we have our tongue uh, repair all taken care of. What we've done, we straightened out this piece of angle iron, got that all good and straight, and then we took a piece of quarter inch by one inch flat and bent it in here and kind of made like a truss out of this front area right here. So this strap is under tension when the tongue gets under load. Now, obviously we could have just taken like a huge piece of schedule 40 pipe and welded it on there. That would have also been pretty strong, but it also would have weighed a ton and been completely ridiculous. So we use a little bit of fancy engineering. We don't have to make the trailer so strong that we can carry like everything in the world. We just need to make it a little stronger than it was and kind of stabilize the piece of equipment. The goal is to every time we use it, it to become better, not worse. <laughs> so anyways, I think we've stabilized the situation and actually made it a little bit better. So let's set it back down on its, on its wheels and, uh, and see what it looks like. Now, whenever, an, another reason why we try to use some fancy engineering up front is because when we're using this trailer, we're all the time like turning it around in the woods and kind of maneuvering it around and really hard to, to, uh, to use areas because everything is so steep and so rocky and, and, and gnarly right here where we live. So that's another reason why we needed this trailer to be really, really small for that purpose. If we had something really big, it wouldn't do us any good at all because we would never be able to move it around anywhere and uh, and it would just be a handicap so we need we needed something smaller so that's kind of a problem because something small is also not very strong <laughs> and you end up kind of overworking it sometimes but we just need to uh, you know just always have that in the back of our minds anyways so yeah let's put the gate on now Let's take a moment here to, to talk about homesteading uh, essentials. After all, that's <laughs> what this video is supposed to be about. Now, homesteading essentials, the essential elements to a homestead could be, I guess they could be uh, quite different to different people because depending on the independent person's reality and what they're doing. Now. For us, we have narrowed it down to these few elements that we think are essential because, uh, because we found that these elements were, were like the most empowering things that could really allow us to progress, to obtain stability, to, to really move forward, uh, increase our amount of income, and, and, and just increase our, our, our overall stability. And that's why we're talking about these few things. We all know that we need shovels and rakes and we need a drill and drill bits. Those things are, those things are easy to get because they're not very expensive and you can get them along the way slowly but surely. We're talking about like, like major elements and uh, to us, well, we're talking about elements that are, that are more of an investment, you know, and, and, uh, and how to spend your money and, and actually increase your ability to to produce and to obtain a positive progression okay so so for us number one for us was a tractor that's what we needed number one now we wanted the tractor for a long time before we actually got the tractor uh, so we we saved our money from like all winter, one winter, then all through the spring, summer, and fall, and well into the next winter bef until we had enough to, to buy our tractor. Because we knew we couldn't really, we couldn't really progress without the tractor. The tractor was going to, it's a major key. It unlocks like a whole new level, and you can get so much more work done. Now, when we got here, there was nothing, there was nothing here. It was just land with trees, and so we had to clear a spot. We had to, we had to, uh, move foundation stones we had to get logs to the mill we had to get lumber from the mill back to here we had to get metal roofing up here there's endless amounts of stuff we needed to do and, and doing all that just carrying logs and boards on your back is completely ridiculous absolutely absurd you cannot do that uh, uh, so so the tractor was a total it was an essential 
totally essential. Now we bought the tractor before we bought other things like, like nice shoes that had soles that didn't have holes in them and stuff. And in a lot of the videos you see us working the land and, and, and doing whatever we're doing, we have awful shoes on that have big cracks and like, you know, whatever. <laughs> you can't see in the video, but, but we're definitely feeling the earth through the holes in the soles of our shoes. Now, so you'd think shoes would be an essential, but in, in our reality, shoes are not an essential. The tractor comes way before the shoes. So we got the tractor and, and, uh, and that really unlocked a, a, another level for us. Now, with the tractor, the tractor doesn't do you much good on its own. So we had to get a boom pole. I don't know if you can kind of see, uh, see the boom pole here in the background. You'll see it in all our videos. We're moving logs and lifting rocks. And we're going to show, a, we're going to throw a couple clips up here where you can see what we're talking about. So the boom pole is a, is a major piece of, uh, or a major upgrade. We, we, we feel a boom pole is, is totally an essential to, to a homestead because it enables you to, uh, to, lift things so whenever we were trying i know that i'm being long-winded here uh sorry about this but but i feel it's necessary to actually get my point across now when we were making the decision to buy the uh the tractor uh uh we were we we were undecided we were going back and forth should we get a four-wheeler should we get a tractor four-wheeler tractor now we were leaning towards the four-wheeler because around here is so steep and to drive a tractor around really steep, rocky areas is really dangerous. And I don't have much experience actually working a four-wheeler. I have ridden them, and I know that they're pretty impressive pieces of equipment. And, and I know that they're safe to ride around on, on really gnarly, uneven terrain. So that's what's leading me towards the four-wheeler. But last minute, we decided not to get the four-wheeler. We moved towards the tractor. And that was a really, really good decision. The tractor is a hundred times uh, the piece of equipment that a four-wheeler is. So since then, my brother has gotten a four-wheeler and we can work the two side by side and the tractor outperforms the four-wheeler in almost everything work-related. So with the tractor and the boom pole, that, that gives you the ability to lift. The four-wheeler doesn't have that. <laughs> so we can lift logs, we can load logs on the mill, we can load logs in the trailer, we can load logs, unload logs out of the trailer. We can lift giant rocks and bring them into position and set them down for building retainer walls, for, for uh, setting foundation stones. There's so many things you can do with the boom pole. It just goes on and on and on. You can lift up a log out of the dirt and then you can cut it into firewood lengths without hitting your bar or your chain on uh, rocks and stuff. So the, it just goes on and on and on. The tractor and the boom pole, absolute essential to a homestead. However, uh, that can only take you so far. And so the next piece of equipment that we invested in was this trailer. The trailer to us is an essential. That's an essential. We got the trailer long before we bought good shoes <laughs> and, uh, and, <laughs> and things like that. So, so the trailer is total essential for us. Like we move firewood in it, we move lumber, we move uh, chicken food, coal, metal, like we're always coming up the hill. When we go to town, we don't go that often, and when we do, we have to make it count. So when we're coming back, we have car springs and like big lengths of steel from the steel yard and, and uh, chicken food and straw and everything else you can imagine tied on this trailer. So, you know, we have to make it count because we don't get to go to town that often. So the trailer is absolute essential. We could never survive without it. Just firewood alone, cutting firewood alone. Like you just, I don't know how you would do it any other way. So the trailer, absolute essential. We'll move on to a, a welder. A welder is an essential piece of equipment to a homestead. Now, the welder, the welder en enables you as you're using anything uh, it, work related. Like uh, when you're out in the woods and you're logging, you're you're cutting logs. You, it, you can be as safe as you can and as delicate as you can, but it's still wear and tear on your equipment. And for us, and a lot of homesteaders, we don't have skidders, <laughs> we don't have logging trucks, and th that's not realistic, that's not what we're doing. So our equipment gets abused. And, uh, and you could see in this video, this trailer was, was getting abused, but now it's better than it was when it was first made, first off the assembly line. So a, a welder in that respect, it allows you to tune up your equipment, it allows you to modify your equipment, and it allows you to really progress. So we feel like a welder really unlocks another level. 
and, and allows you to. Like just the other day, I was up here foraging and my brother came up the trail. He went to till up his garden. He's putting his garden in. And his handle on his big tiller broke. So what would he have done? Oh, well, let me order another one. Yeah, two weeks later, you would have one. Or let me go find a welding shop. Okay, that takes all day. Then you have to go drop it off and pick it up a week later. Completely ridiculous. So he walks up here and we weld it back together. And then we actually weld gussets on it and make it so like it should have been <laughs> from the place. And now it will never break. <laughs> and that took a total of probably 45 minutes and he was right back in the game. So that saves so much time. Now this trailer cost uh, us three hundred dollars. I think a reasonable welder is around like, like four hundred, you know, four to five hundred bucks or something. But this trailer would rapidly deteriorate into nothing, and then we would have to buy another trailer. But with the welder, it enables us to stabilize things like this and prolong the life of them, as well as modify them to better suit our needs. So we feel a welder is an absolute essential to a home to a homestead that should come long before good shoes and stuff. <laughs> now, this particular welder we have here was actually given to us by a good friend of, of ours who was our, our neighbor when we lived back east. And he, uh, he comes out here and does, we go mountain biking and shred all the trails around here. And he brought us this welder out. And uh, I, I can't say enough about a welder. And I also can't thank him enough either because that was a big deal. So anyways, two thumbs up. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, a welder, total essential, absolute essential. Now, another essential to a homestead is the forge, a basic set of blacksmith tools. With a basic set of blacksmith tools, it is, uh, again, that unlocks another level. Like, there's so many things that you think you don't need, and that's because you're making plans in your reality, and your reality is you don't have a forge, and you don't have a welder, and you don't have a basic set of blacksmith tools. So you're thinking, I need to go to Home Depot, and I need to buy some ugly little stamped out hinges that I don't really even like. Or I need to go buy some sort of like chintzy like gate latch thing that I don't really like for my chicken house or for my shed or whatever, blah, 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 so on and so forth. But in your reality, it's so justified because that's the only thing you know. That's the only thing we have known at times. But when you have a basic, just portable forge and a handful of just small blacksmith tools, it unlocks another level. At that point, you can make any bracket that you want. You can make any hinge that you want, door latch, etc., so on and so forth. And for us, making a living. At this point, we haven't been carving much wood. We make 100% of our living from forging. So that is a major uh, element in our life, a forge, total essential, absolutely. Now, uh, I, I think I think we're going to stop right there with with essentials. Clearly, you know, like I said earlier, you, you need you need other things too. But but all of the elements that we just talked about, the tractor, the boom pole, the trailer, the welder, the forge. All of those kind of like everything like, well, I guess the whole homestead like that uh, in a sense works together like, like a guitar. With, if the guitar is missing a string, you can still play it. It just doesn't sound nearly as good. And if it's missing two or three strings, you can still play it. It just doesn't sound good at all. But when it's a fine-tuned, nice guitar and you have all the strings, it's amazing what you can get out of that instrument. And I feel like like all of the, uh, the, the, the essentials that we just named work together like that to really uh, uh, accent one another and help each other out. And they all work together to create a harmonious <laughs> balance of efficiency. I didn't mean to get too poetic there. But anyways, I feel like I'm being long-winded. But I also feel like what I'm saying is very, very important to anyone who understands what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, those are the elements that we think are the most efficient or the most uh, essential, the, 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 that you need the most on a homestead. But there so, is, yes, we feel that the number one essential to homesteading is, as a team, you know, we, we feel like the number one essential to homesteading is a, uh, a basic understanding of of uh, human psychology. Mm. 
yes, this uh, <laughs> this talk has definitely taken a turn here. Now, a basic understanding of, of human psychology is is uh, is important because you face a lot of things when you are working together as a team. You face a lot of things when you're forced to learn new things. You face a lot of things when you are doing without. Uh, when you don't have anything, you are judged by the rest of society. But not only are you judged by the rest of society, you're also judged by yourself, subconsciously, and sometimes consciously. And so you have to deal with these elements, and that's why it helps to have a basic understanding of, of, of human psychology. Now, uh, when you are faced with these elements, and you are learning new things, and some of these things can be frustrating, and some things can fail, and some things cannot work, and that is when it's important to understand that, that you are a team, and... and uh, <laughs> and you have to ask yourself honest questions like this, like, like a team of, of homesteaders, as, as we are making suggestions to one another, this self, like uh, honesty, I don't know if I said that right, but, but being honest with yourself is really, really important because when in a frustrating environment, when you don't have many things and you're doing without and, and, and you are, there's a lot of pressure on you, Humans deal with things in two different ways. They, they deal with it consciously and subconsciously. And the subconsciously handling of, of all your problems is where, is, is where problems start. <laughs> That's a major element. So, so uh, uh, in a stressful environment, when, when you're trying to figure something out and your partner, your team member, suggests something and then you respond, you have to be honest. How much of that response is 100% neutral, directed towards the, the point of, of solving whatever the problem is, or how much of that response is directed towards uh, having a subconscious desire to be a winner, to dominate, to belittle. And if you were honest with, that, with yourself, you would read the side panel and you would find that in that stressful moment, the, the, the portion of the response that was directed towards neutral concern and, and, and health towards a positive progression was very minimal. And the portion of the response that was geared towards the whatever that, that was delivered with a nefarious intent was much larger. <laughs> so being honest about those things can really... Uh, help out like your partnership and help out the, the concept of like of like of a team effort and 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 in the moment it's hard to always be aware of those things but that's why a basic understanding of human psychology is the number one thing that can benefit your homestead another element of human psychology is as some of you are watching the videos and you are seeing, and I'm insisting, or not insisting, but encouraging you guys to go get a welder. A lot of you guys can say, well, I already have a welder and I can weld all day long. That's not a problem. But then there's a portion of you guys that have, don't have a welder. And you are saying, well, I don't know how to weld. And, and so this fear comes up inside of you. And... Uh, and some of us are really good at getting over those fears, and some of us are not so good <laughs> at getting over those fears. Those fears are supposed to uh, not lead your life, but, but have an effect on your direction. And you're supposed to feel that fear and make a safe, conscious, logical decision, and then uh, embrace the possibilities in the near future with a sense of adventure. But you're not supposed to face, feel that fear, and then quickly justify and, and add another stone to the fortress, uh, the, the psychological fortress of, of defeat and excuse that we have so viciously worked our uh, entire life to construct that we hide within these safe walls of, of, uh, of excuse and defeat and, and, and deception. That, that is not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to feel the challenge and adventurously embrace it and positively 
and cautiously proceed, but not <laughs> uh, subconsciously blast out an excuse and add another stone to the, to the wall of, of your, uh, your, your fortress of excuse. So knowing, knowing just a, a little bit of human psychology, basic human psychology, and being honest and being adventurous enough to explore those concepts, I think, without a doubt, we think, are the number one, or is the number one element that really unlocks your potential in, in, uh, in homesteading, and not just in homesteading, in life. Because there's an old saying, and the old saying is, how you do anything is how you do everything. So if you are fearful in things like, should I uh, try to learn something new? You, you know, like, should I try to learn welding? Let's just talk about welding. Okay, should I try to learn welding? Oh, well, no, uh, I, don't, I don't need to do that right now because, uh, well, I mean, it's, I, I'm not, I mean, I'm not scared, but okay, so <laughs> you can, all of these excuses, man, we're just so fortified. We've been working on this since we were a kid. <laughs> so, uh, but if we make excuses subconsciously about that, the possibility of us making excuses about other things is very likely. Anyways, I needed to make that long-winded point so I could prove, or not prove, but better, better describe or shine a light or, 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 or bring into view uh, the, the point that I'm trying to make about how you do anything is how you do everything. Anyways, the topic that I've that I've touched on to the uh, the corner of here is is very vast, and so I won't continue much further <laughs> on that topic. But we both agree as a team that a basic understanding of human psychology is the most important thing that you can have on the homestead. I apologize for being long-winded. We are going to show now some clips of uh, of the tractor and things we do with it, and the trailer and the boom pole and, and, and things like that. So let's take a look. Alright, so we hope you guys enjoyed the video and we apologize for being long-winded, but uh, often at the end of our videos I always feel like, man, there was so much more I needed to say. At the end of this one, we both still feel like there was so much more we needed to say. There's no way we could talk about all of the uh, homesteading essentials. There's just too many, but, but we kind of talked about some of the important ones. And uh, anyways, we hope this video brought you guys some value. We hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.